Hello everybody and welcome back to another Deep Ogre review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Voyager class Rise of the Beast mainline Optimus Prime action figure. I know I did a short review on this guy a few days or weeks ago, it depends on when I'm uploading this, but um, I just wanted to get him in the booth, uh, show you in a real in-depth look about this figure because I thoroughly enjoy it and I knew I would but I do still have some gripes, so without further ado, let's get into his accessory. Okay, for his Ion Blaster, it is just a very, very nice modernization and techization, tech, 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 whatever the fuck. It is a new update to an old classic of the Ion Blaster. I love it a lot. I love this little line coming down here. Now you're going to notice with this Optimus, I did put some Sharpie and paint on this gun and the Optimus itself. So you're going to notice a lot of colorful silver that is not going to be on the final figure when you get it. So just as a heads up, don't be disappointed when the figure is kind of bland, because uh, we all knew it was going to be kind of bland when we saw the photos. But that's besides the point. This gun is pretty good, but it does seem a little small for this Optimus. I don't know. But my friend, that Nurse Isaac, did point out, he pointed out that you can put put the gun in Beast Alliance's Optimus's hand, and it fits a lot better than it does with this Voyager Optimus. So if you want to do that, you can, and then you can give this Optimus some other gun from a different Optimus, because God knows we've had a lot of fucking Optimuses recently. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to point out. And last but not least, if you want to take a blade from the 5-pack Optimus or the original ROTF, or, yeah, ROTF Optimus from Studio Series, you can, and it just goes right in the hand, and it does kind of finagle it in there, but boom, and he looks perfect with that as well. For detail, you get a beautiful head sculpt right there. Just absolutely stunning with all that cybernetic detail on the mask. Nice baby blue for the eyes. Silver for the head crest. But, when you turtle around, twirl it around, you see a light piping block. Light piping block. Jesus, H. Mary Joseph. They painted over the light piping. Why? Why did they do this? They they haven't done this in a very long time. Actually, no, they did it with Transmetal 2 Megatron as well. I they they don't do it often anymore, but when they do do it, it feels so cheap. Soundwave, Siege, and Earthrise Soundwave have perfect light piping. Shockwave, Siege Shockwave has perfect light piping. Why? Why paint it over? You guys have good light piping out there. You could have made this good light piping. I understand why they did Bumblebee movie Soundwave, because for some reason the light, pipe, light piping block in that figure was gray. This weird wishy-washy gray instead of red. But come on, man. They could have so easily had some of the best Optimus Prime light piping we've seen in years, and they just painted it up. That's bullshit. I get a little flustered about my light piping because I really love it. It brings me back to the good old days of Transformers Prime and whatnot. But, moving on. You do have very nice shoulders. This is basically... Actually, it... I, having the figure in hand and seeing the better CG model, I do like this a lot more than the Bumblebee movie design. I don't know. Something about the Bumblebee movie figure of Optimus, the Bumblebee movie figure of Optimus. That's what I just fucking said. Good job. Um, just didn't really do it for me. I still want it, but it's not high on my list anymore. But you do get all this detail. And this is a mainline figure. This is like... This is just absolutely stunning. And I can't wait for the Studio Series 1. I guess if you really wanted to, you could complain about him having like red underwear under his shorts and gray but that doesn't really matter to me you still get a fuck ton of cybernetic detail and just all these wires and tubes hanging out in these circular areas just absolutely beautiful i did want to point out that i did paint this little silver bit these little circles on the forearms 
and all these studs and windshield wipers. So that's that's all I did to this figure. It just pops it out a little more. And as for kibble, uh, you pretty much only get the tires, which unlike Earthrise Optimus, uh, which is still my favorite figure in my collection, you can't pop these off and make it a little more clean. I wish you could, but whatever. It's Again, it's just a mainline figure. It's not that big of a deal to me. For articulation, all you pretty much get is a swivel at the head. He cannot look up or down. But if you really wanted to, you could force this black piece up. It makes a really concerning snapping sound, but you can do it. And you can see that sadly it is just a pin in there, which sucks, but whatever. But if you really wanted to, you could snap it out of place and he could have a bigger neck and look up in certain angles it would look good uh still can't look down but that's fine arms are kind of built weird in my opinion so up about that far down about that far but because they're on the same pin as the shoulder uh, uh pad there you go as the shoulder you have this weird thing where you move the arm down and then that gets stuck and it stops, but it moves at just the right angle to piss you off, so you have to move it back every time. You're... And it's it's just annoying. It's just me, maybe, I don't know. A uh, little bit of butterfly for transformation all the way around. Bicep swivel. S single jointed elbow gets all the way up. Ball joint at the wrists, which can be a little tight at first but they can move in as well. You get a swivel up here at his boobs, and then a smaller swivel down here, right here, at his actual waist. And then due to transformation, you do get a beautiful ab crunch, which really helps in photography. I really love that. Uh, one thing I did want to point out in this segment is the way that this is assembled is kind of weird. You have this thin piece of plastic right here, and it's not that perfect quality of plastic. It's not hard, dense, nice. It's kind of spongy and soft. So sometimes if you're playing with him, he will rock back and forth if you really want him to. And it's not that hard to do it. I'm like barely pressing on him right here. So just be careful about that when you're <laughs> messing with him. Uh, I'm really scared I might snap that one day. Leg can kick up about that far. Back, whoa, way far. Beautiful spread. He does actually get a lot further if you move the arms out. Holy shoot. Thigh swivel. Leg is on a single joint, but can go back past 90. Foot can go down, it can go up, and ankle pivot. Let them come. For a comparison, here he is next to the Transformers Earthrise Optimus Prime and the Transformers Classics Optimus Prime. Next, for comparison, here he is next to the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Bumblebee and the Studio Series Rise of the Beast uh, Battle Trap. Bumblebee, a little too big next to this Optimus. Battle Trap, a little too big next to this Optimus. This Optimus is quite small. Uh, it is a mainline Voyager. They need to cut, cut costs somewhere. So I guess that makes sense. But at the same time, why? <laughs> I know that the Studio Series 1 is coming out soon, and but it's going to be a fucking buzzworthy Bumblebee exclusive, so whatever. Um, it's just, it sucks. It really, really does suck. Because for people who aren't going to be able to get that Studio Series 1, this is the best option they have, and it's still really hard to find. So he, him being small really hinders uh, it, in my opinion. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is next to the Transformers 2 series Core Class Freezer, the Transformers Beast Alliance Optimus Prime, and the Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Battle Blade Optimus Prime. Obviously, there's mostly Optimus Primes here, but I'm really excited for this Rise of the Beast movie. For his truck mode, it is pretty good. Um, you do get some very, very good weapon storage. I mean, even there's a little notch for the magazine right there to go in. 
and you just plug that in and it looks perfect it fits it fits perfect right there it's not going to move out of the way if you do look deep inside of there you do end up seeing his hands but that doesn't really bother me none i really couldn't give less of a shit it's just a new take on a classic optimus prime transformation and i couldn't be more happy the only thing i really don't like is the toyeticness of these headlights and how the headlights aren't up here where they're supposed to be and they're down here where the bumper is which is really inconvenient but you know what whatever it's a it, it's not a collectible toy it is for kids keep in mind this is just like a higher form of say like uh revenge of the fallen sea spray this is basically just that but for rise of the beasts so i give it a pass other than that the wheels roll very very nicely it does share a lot of transformation cues with earthrise optimus prime like his uh, gas tanks flipping out from his thighs uh and some uh surprising elements of an and of evasion mode optimus prime especially in the legs and the arms but other than that it's pretty good truck mode i cannot complain but let's get into my final thoughts so for my final thoughts on this figure i'm really 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 in love with it i collect optimuses that's pretty much the only character i go out of my way to collect because i know i can trust optimus to give me a quality or just fun figure every time and this figure definitely delivers on that promise this figure is really fun to pose and mess with and yeah the shoulders can be sometimes a little finicky but all you have to do is move them out of the way sometimes, and then they're perfect. I do really hate the blocked off light piping. I went on like a five minute tangent in this video. Sorry about that. Um, and I don't really enjoy the, um, what was I going to say? The softness of the hinges, especially on the waist. It scares me. And the size discrepancy is, it's doable. I can deal with it. It's fine. It's not going to be on my main display. It's going to be in a different shelf. So it's fine. I honestly don't mind. This figure is a great desk toy. It's a great display piece. If you really wanted to add some paint to it and make it pop like I did, it's just such a fun, versatile figure. And I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. I really thoroughly enjoyed this thing throughout all the complaints I have. I, I love it. What can I say? I'm a simple person. I love it. Also, something I didn't mention when going over the gun, if you have an Iron Man blast effect, it does pour it into the gun. So, boom, you have that too. So, yeah, if you guys like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more and you haven't already, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.